Next, I'm going to start tracing my lines. Now, a few important notes about this. The order in which you trace the lines matter. For this example, I'm actually going to jump around so that you can see why that matters. But what I recommend for you is that you actually start by tracing down here at the bottom of the sheet going up. And then another thing to keep in mind is that we want our site model to be actually larger than our property. And so we're going to go ahead and we'll extend these lines beyond what's drawn here on the page. We'll just kind of come up with our best guess for where those lines would go. The tool that you want to use to create a site model using this method is going to be the polyline tool. And I'm going to use this corner vertex mode. One thing about site models is that um, site models will make your file large. So to keep the file size down, you want to use the fewest number of vertices possible. And so that's why I'm going to go ahead and use this corner vertex mode. And I really want to try to minimize the clicks as much as possible. And in fact, one thing that you'll notice I am only going to trace the major contours here. I'm not going to trace the minor contours. So let's go ahead. I needed to do one more thing um, before I started drawing, and that was to select the correct design layer. So let me go ahead and reassign this to the elevations design layer. And the, I'm keeping all of my polylines on this elevation design layers even after I've created my site model, just in case I have to backtrack so that I have that original line work. So now that I have that correct, I'm going to come over here and just keep tracing. Now for this next line, I am going, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and use the Bezier vertex mode to record this curve, but I'm going to recommend that you keep it in the corner vertex mode and just click the approximation of these curves. But I will show you how to work with um, a line that has curves, because a curve is just automatically going to have more vertices as part of it. So we'll look at how we can handle those. And then for these last lines, I'm just going to come over here using that corner vertex mode and trace that. Okay, so we have the basic shapes and now what I need to do is I need to come back here. I need to create some additional topo lines so that my site model is going to be larger than the property. So to do that, I think I will just come over here and I'll make a duplicate of that line right there. Then I'll make a duplicate of that line right there and kind of look a little, look at the spacing in between these major contours. So you can see that the contour spacing down here at the bottom is more tightly spaced, meaning that the slope drops off dramatically there. Whereas here at the top, it's a little bit more spread out. So in fact, I think I'll move that one up a little bit more. And so now from top to bottom, I'm going to be creating a larger site model. The last thing that I would like to do is to come over here and grab the reshape tool. And I'm going to use this add vertex mode. And I'm just going to add a vertex and kind of stretch it out where I think that the topography of this land, of this land would naturally go. So I'm just going to do that for all of my lines. In fact, I think I need to change the angle of this one down here. And I need to find that last one. There we go. So I'm going to come over here and just change my layer option to active only. And this white um, 
The white fill that you see, that's just because all of these lines have a fill. You can go ahead and change that to none and it'll look more normal. So now that those are all cleaned up, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to change the layer option to show snap others because I want to be able to read the numbers. I want to be able to read the elevations for all of these different lines because this next step we're going to assign the elevation to each line. Okay, so I have my seven lines selected over here. I can verify that in the object info palette. And the next step is to come over here to the landmark menu and then go to survey input and we're going to select 2D polys to 3D source data. And then this dialog box is going to allow you to assign an elevation to every line. And remember when I told you that the order in which you draw these in is important? And ideally, we would have started drawing down here at the bottom. So this line right here would be 50 feet in elevation. We would have started drawing there, and then we would have drawn up to the top. If you don't, if you go out of order, which is the way that we've done it, then it takes a little bit more effort to get the correct elevation assigned to it. But um, that's what we're going to do in this example, because that's how I drew it. For the start elevation, because remember the first line that I drew was here at 100, so that's going to be my starting elevation, so 100 feet. And then the intervals, it's 10 feet between each of these topo lines. So I'm going to change the interval to 10 feet. And then we do want to create 3D polygons, so go ahead and click OK. And then I get this next dialog box that wants me to assign an elevation to each contour. And so right now we're at 100 feet in elevation. It's going to be whatever this highlighted or selected line is. So I can see that it's 100 feet in elevation right there. And once that's set correctly, I just click on Next. And so Next is going to be 90 feet in elevation. But you can see that numerically the way that this dialog box works is the values go up 10 feet because that's the interval that we set it at. But since I started drawing from the highest elevation to the lowest elevation, I'm just going to have to click on this down button to make that 90 and then click next. So this one is 80 feet. So I'll have to change that to 80 feet. Next is going to be 70 feet. Next is going to be 60 feet. And then we're going to jump up here to the top because that's the order that I drew them in. And so if this is 100 feet, this one's going to be 110 feet. Okay, and then click Next. And then if this one is 60 feet, then this one is 50 feet. And so then I need to click this down to 50. And so your process will be a lot more efficient if you start drawing at the bottom, moving on upwards. But I wanted to show you how that worked. So now I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And so it's asking me if I want to delete my original 2D polylines. And no, I would like to keep those. Let's go ahead and change the layer option to Active Only. And then look at this in 3D using the Flyover tool. And so we have two separate groups of lines. We have our 3D contours up here, and then we have the original 2D polylines that we used for tracing in the beginning. So let's go ahead and get rid of the 2D polylines. There we go. Just go ahead and delete those out of the file, and then I need to grab this one separately. And then we'll come up here in top plan view, and I want to take a look at the vertex count of these different lines. So if I start up here at the top and I come over to the object info palette for this 3D polygon, I can see that eight vertices and eight is a pretty low number. I'm happy with that. And as I continue to click down the row, I can see that I have a very small count until I get to this line. And this line is the one that if you'll remember when I was drawing, I traced it using the Bezier vertex mode. And that's why it has so many vertices. When you convert a polyline to a 3D polygon, the vertice count goes way up. And so what I need to do is there's one extra step in order to bring that vertex count down. And that would be to come over here to the Modify menu and then scroll down to the bottom where it says Drafting Aids. And we're going to click on the Simplify Polys. Then under the Maximum Deviation, you can play around with these numbers, but six inches, a six inch deviation is going to give me a pretty good result. 
So when I click OK, I can come over here and I now can see that that vertex count is 9. And so this is going to be a much more efficient site model for the file. Let's go ahead and just click on the rest of these and make sure that the vertex count is good. So everything looks good, and now I'm ready to go ahead and turn this into a site model.